Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing local anaesthetics. Okay, so in this video what we're going to now turn our attention to is the local anaesthetics themselves and how they actually are going to affect all of this uh, physiology that we've seen so far. Okay, right. So we're going to start off by looking at the structure of a local anaesthetic. And we'll see two examples, okay? And we'll see the general principles that all local anaesthetics actually uh, abide by. And we'll discuss the uh, relevance of this for uh, their um, breakdown within the body. Okay, so we're going to start off with um, the first ever local anaesthetic, which is actually cocaine. And in fact, all the other local anaesthetics came from cocaine, they're modified versions of cocaine. So cocaine is our first ever local anaesthetic, and this is why all of the local anaesthetics have at the end of their name the suffix cane. Well, most of them do in anyway. So you have, for instance, benzocaine, procaine, lidocaine is the other example I'm going to give you in a moment. Okay, right, so let's have a look at the structure then of cocaine. Okay, so, uh, basically, cocaine has an aromatic portion, okay, which consists of a benzene ring, like so. Oops. Okay, uh, so we'll have the alternating double and single bonds within the benzene ring, and we'll draw um, the skeletal structure, okay? So, here is our skeletal structure for the benzene ring. Then, um, I'll sort of break the skeletal structure for a moment because it's simpler to show uh, ester links actually with the molecular formula than it is to show them with the skeletal formula. Okay, so remember, we don't need to strictly abide by rules for skeletal and molecular formula. All it's about is trying to show things in the simplest way possible. Okay, so if the skeletal formula actually makes things appear more complicated, use the molecular formula. Okay, so you then have an ester link here, okay, and this is another general feature of uh, local anaesthetic molecules. So you have an aromatic portion generally, like so, and I'll show you the structure in a moment of lidocaine and we can uh, see the analogies. Okay, so this is an aromatic portion, then we're going to have an ester portion here, okay, and then the other key portion you're going to have is some sort of basic portion. Now, uh, in the case of cocaine, it's not a very simple basic portion. So let me now uh, talk you through the portion that we have for cocaine over here. Okay, so basically you have this six-membered ring here, where one of the members is a nitrogen, right over here. And that nitrogen then has a methyl group coming off, so this is supposed to represent a methyl group. And again, the skeletal way of representing a methyl group, I've just decided, is actually a bit, um, you know, it's more difficult to realise what that is, so I think I will just denote a methyl group there. Okay, then, off up here, you then have uh, an ester coming off here as well. So you'll have the carbonyl group, like so, then the oxygen, and then a methyl group coming off that oxygen. Okay, so that's the group coming off up here, and then you're also going to have an extra loop here. So this carbon will also have another loop coming like so. So you have a methylene group there, a methylene group here, and then it will be attached down like that, and you'll be relieved to know that that is the end of the structure of cocaine. So we have one six-membered loop here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we also have a seven-membered ring as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now, the important bit is this nitrogen here, because that nitrogen will have a lone pair. Okay, I might show it here. And that lone pair is a nice center of negative charge, basically. So two electrons nicely positioned together. Basically what can happen is protons from solution can come and associate with that little lone pair there, and this will give the whole molecule a positive charge. The whole molecule can accept a proton and become the ionized version of this molecule. Okay, so this group here is much more generalized. You have something similar in all local anesthetic structures. And basically, you need to have some sort of basic potential, basically. So this is a basic group. It can accept protons from solution and hence become ionized and become charged. 
Okay, right, so that's the structure of cocaine. Let's now see uh, an example of another uh, local anesthetic molecule, um, which is a lidocaine. Now, lidocaine is one of the most widely used local anesthetics, even still today. It's also used as an antidysrhythmic, and it's also uh, occasionally used as an antiepileptic. So it's a very, very important drug, and the basis for its use as an antidysrhythmic and as an antiepileptic, you will hopefully be able to understand that from looking at how it works as a local anesthetic. Okay, so it's the same incredible mechanism by which these drugs only block, or at least prefer to block neurons which are firing at a too high frequency, and they leave neurons which are firing slowly alone. Those will be allowed to fire their action potentials, whereas the local anesthetics will stop neurons which are trying to fire action potentials too rapidly, and they'll completely silence them. And that's absolutely incredible. And that idea is why they are selected for pain neurons over other types of neurons, because pain neurons fire extremely rapidly, or at least it's one of the reasons they're selected for pain neurons over other neurons. It's also the reason why these same drugs have uses as anti-dysrhythmics, uh, because if you've got an ectopic focus on the heart, which is firing action potentials extremely rapidly and causing the heart to beat far too fast, you know, suppressing the sinuatrial nerve, uh, then if you give a drug that blocks tissue that is firing too rapidly, okay, then it will completely silence the ectopic focus, but will leave the sinoatrial node alone, and it will be able to fire its action potentials, and hence it will restore normal cardiac function. And it's the same principle for epilepsy. If you've got an epileptogenic focus, which is firing action potentials far too rapidly, Okay, we can silence that epileptogenic focus without silencing the entire brain, basically, because the brain neurons will be firing action potentials at a rate which isn't blocked by uh, the local anesthetic, whereas, well, or the anti-epileptic, whereas the epileptogenic focus will be firing too rapidly, and therefore it will be completely silenced. Okay, but we'll come back to those mechanisms. We'll come back to that discussion uh, once we've actually seen the mechanism by which this uh, preference for blocking uh, neurons which are firing too rapidly, or excitable cells which are firing too rapidly, um, once we've actually seen what that is. Okay, right. So, for now, let's have a look at the structure of lidocaine. Okay, so again, lidocaine has an aromatic structure, so let's draw this out. So here is the benzene ring for lidocaine, with its alternating double and single bonds. And off the benzene ring, you'll then have two methyl groups, like so. Okay, now in the case of lidocaine, you don't actually have an ester here. Instead, you have an amide. Okay, so this can either be an ester or an amide. It's one of those sort of links, okay? And let's show this here. So you'll have the amino group here, then you'll have the carboxylic acid group here. So it's kind of in reverse. The carboxylic acid group is on this side, and now the other group is attached to the aromatic ring. Okay, uh, then what you'll have is a methylene group, so a CH2 group here, and then uh, a nitrogen atom, Okay, like so, which then has two ethylene groups coming off it. Whoops, not like that, that's a methyl group, sorry, ethyl groups rather than methyl groups. Okay, so CH2 and then CH3 and then a CH2 and then a CH3. Okay, so these are ethyl groups coming off the nitrogen atom here. I said ethylene before, ethyl groups is the correct terminology. Okay, right, so this then is your basic group that you have here, and uh, this again will be able to accept a proton onto the lone pair of electrons that the nitrogen atom here has, and that will make the whole molecule positively charged. And the important thing is that these local anesthetic molecules will be generally protonated under physiological pH of around 7.45. So under that pH, you have a certain concentration of protons uh, in the surroundings, and these molecules will be protonated at that concentration of protons. 
Okay, so here the main difference was that we had an amide link rather than an ester link, and that can be quite significant because um, basically how are these molecules degraded within the body? Well, what happens if you've got an ester link is that that ester link will be hydrolyzed. Okay, so you'll use water to break the molecule apart basically into two pieces, and there are enzymes all over the body called non-selective uh, esterases, okay, or non-specific esterases, I should say, instead, okay, uh, so non-specific esterases, uh, which just hydrolyze ester links, no matter uh, what it's in, really, okay, and you have these all over in peripheral tissues, but they're particularly concentrated within the liver, and you even have them in the blood. So if you've got loquine aesthetic molecules within the blood, not only will they be, be being removed by the liver and other peripheral tissues where they'll be broken down, but they're also actually being broken down in the blood. Now, the advantage of having a, well, maybe the advantage of having a, a low aesthetic which has an amide link within it rather than an ester link within it is that amide links are far stronger than ester links, okay? So it will take you much longer to break down uh, low aesthetic molecules which have amide links in than it will to break down low aesthetic molecules which have ester links in. So these generally will be longer lasting than ones where you've got an ester link in. So that's the significance of having an ester versus an amide link. Ester will be shorter lived, amide will be longer lived. Okay, right. Uh, so, we'll call it there for this video, and in the next video what we'll do is we'll finally turn our attention to the mechanism by which these drugs selectively uh, block neurons which are firing too rapidly, basically, okay? They have a preference for neurons which are firing too rapidly, and they will completely silence those neurons which are firing too rapidly. And the importance of this is that the pain neurons, the nociceptors, generally will be firing action potentials extremely rapidly. Now, I just want to make sure you understand what I mean by that. Okay, so if I've got my neuron here, okay, so this is our pseudo-unipolar neuron. Basically, let me now plot a graph, a very simple graph. In fact, we don't even need uh, two axes, we only need one axis, okay, and this can be time. And then I'm going to plot on this time axis here every time this neuron fires an action potential, okay? So maybe it fires an action potential every second, and I'll plot something like this rhythmically every second. Okay. Alternatively, it could be firing extremely rapidly. Okay, like so. It might be firing action potentials more like this. Okay, so that's what I mean by the frequency at which a neuron is firing action potentials. Pain neurons will be firing action potentials like this. They're firing action potential after action potential after action potential after action potential, after action potential extremely rapidly with very small breaks in between consecutive action potentials. Okay, local anesthetics are going to completely silence this. So you're going to get no action potentials firing in this one here. So this one will be completely silenced, whereas they're not going to affect this. This one will be allowed to continue firing its action potentials, and it will fire them all, okay? Whereas this one will be allowed to fire absolutely none. So how, how on earth do local anesthetics stop action potentials firing completely in neurons which are trying to fire action potentials too rapidly? Okay, well that's the question we're going to come on to in the next video.